Speakers Conference of Speakers seeks better synergy between the National Assembly and State Assemblies on review of the Constitution. Women get a good deal courtesy of a huge fund for small and medium enterprises from Afexim and Nexim banks. Also on political update today, INEC resumes continuous voters registration exercise, but raises alarm on increasing security concerns in Anambra state. We also have a first quarter assessment of Nigeria's efforts to strengthen its economy and deepen democratic practices. I'm Fisai Ogun for your compliments of the season and welcome. The Conference of Speakers of Nigeria wants the National Assembly to engage more with state assemblies for a well-articulated and result-oriented constitution review. At an interaction with the CLAC to the National Assembly, Chairman Nigeria Conference of Speakers and Speaker Bauchi State House of Assembly Abubakar Suleiman maintains that critical issues such as security, restructuring, and local government administration need to be examined deeply to achieve acceptable and workable outcomes. I want to implore the entire uh, uh, assembly to take advantage of this amendment to see that we strengthen democracy by it. Exactly. Exactly. And that all the north, those areas that were just prepared for us when we were not there, mm. now this is time for us to tie the north exactly. to make sure that. Uh, laws that will work for us is what we now have in place. Mm -hmm. And I want to assure you that if you will do this and uh, uh, you know keep us involved, your progress thereby it, it's, it's not it's not much. If you just tell our interparliamentary uh, uh, directorate here, they will follow up and they will inform me. Mm -hmm. And you can be rest assured that Definitely. whatsoever thing you propose mm -hmm. will follow it up to letter place. Okay, very much. It seems that uh, good times are here for Nigerian women who have been in the forefront of uh, campaigns for equality and inclusion. The African Export and Import, that is Afrexim Bank, and the Nigerian um, Export and Import, that's Nexim Bank, are in partnership to mobilize a $50 million project preparation fund to boost small and medium enterprises, including those promoted specifically by women and youths. Women are often tagged with poverty and the World Economic Forum in the new report finds that the coronavirus pandemic has widened the gender gap by a generation and closing it will take concerted efforts by policymakers around the world. My shop was closed for three months. My shop was closed. No business, nothing. I was just sitting at home. Based on the current trajectory, women would have to wait another 135.6 years up from 99.5 years in 2020 to achieve overall parity with men. Africa Bank is leading a campaign to raise $50 million to promote value chain activities for women and youth in Nigeria. Minister of Women Affairs Podding Talent, who is appreciative of efforts made so far in combating issues confronting women, say more still needs to be done. The government of Nigeria recognizes that women's economic empowerment is not only important in its own right, but it is also smart economics with the potential to bring about broad-based growth and poverty alleviation at the national level and state level. Towards providing technical assistance to increase pipeline of bankable projects, particularly from SMEs where the women and youth have their businesses. The facility is designed to increase women and youth participation in the global agro export market so the small business owners like Mary can laugh again. Now, after about two and a half years, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has announced Monday, the 28th of June. 2021 for the resumption of the continuous voter registration exercise nationwide. The chairman of the commission, however, expressed worry over the growing security concerns in Anambra state. A tiny material, but a mighty weapon for the electorate. But providing this material was suspended in August 2018, but to resume in June 2021. 
This will continue till the third quarter of the year 2022. But in Anambra State, the exercise will be temporarily suspended in August 2021 and will resume after the governorship elections in November. This is to enable INEC tidy up the voter register. We are going to deploy the online registration portal so that people don't have to crowd around the polling units during the period um, for registration of voters. Uh, they can start the process online and there's going to be a locator to the portal that we are developing that will guide them to the next available registration center. So they simply go for the capture of their facials and the biometrics. Uh, you don't have to go and spend a long time doing all the processes um, all at the same time. And we hope also that doing so will help us to deal with one of the nagging issues in voter registration. That is multiple registration. I repeat, NIN is not going to be mandatory for voter registration for the simple reason that we are operating on the basis of the law establishing INIC. Governorship elections slated for November 6 in Anambra State, but the sounds of gun scare INEC because the commission is yet to recover from the Kitty State constituency experience where some lives were lost. And we have suspended a kitty indefinitely, and I mean indefinitely. Indefinite in a kitty state, but preventing the spread of the coronavirus through the syringe is definite. So the INEC chair takes its job. Of course, uh, the electoral process needs a uh, shot in the arm. But joining us today on Political Update is Honorable Chris Asbogo, member representing Newe North and Newe South and uh, Ekusigo Federal Constituency of an Ambra State. You heard welcome. Let me, of course, first welcome you, especially on a day like this, uh, uh, you know, auspicious day like this, uh, especially for uh, the Christian faithful. Uh, Honorable Asbogo, welcome to Political Update. Thank you very much. You, you listened to the INEC chairman. Yes, I did. Yeah, and his worries. Uh, especially concerning Nambra State, uh, against the backdrop of what uh, we heard a couple of days ago to the entourage of Professor Soludo. But uh, any cause for worry? Um, the recent uh, spread of insecurity in Nambra State uh, obtained a lot of, uh, uh, so it become a source of uh, concern to a lot of people because Nambra naturally, or before now, used to be seen as a very peaceful, uh, atmosphere that is good for business, good for residents, people travel a lot, people who reside outside Anambra. They, they move around and come around because of uh, social engagements, you know, uh, that happens and economic activity. But uh, in recent past, uh, a lot of uh, instances have uh, brought some level of fear among people, you know. Uh, the letters being um, what happened a couple of days back uh, with regards to our brother, Professor Soludo, who happens to be addressing um, a town hall in his community and suddenly uh, there was um, an outbreak of uh, violence and uh, some armed men shot down. Many in the uniform, so it's not something that uh, anybody can take lightly. So, But uh, the good thing is that uh, I would believe that uh, the IG and the other security apparatus in the country can uh, work, work working swiftly to identify perpetrators of this crime and also we can easily nip it. Let's, uh, you know, go back a bit so that we'll, we'll start uh, with our discussions. Of course, we needed to respond uh, to what the NHR has said. Now, at the beginning of the year, just before the beginning of the year, when we had you in the studio, we were talking about uh, Nigeria's performance in 2020, uh, the low hanging fruits, the challenges. Now the first quarter is gone. We're just starting uh, the second quarter. What would be your assessment so far? Have you been able to weather the storm, especially against the backdrop of the dire uh, predictions uh, based on the fact that we didn't have much earnings uh, in the past year? Yes, um, there's a little bit of uh, upswing in the economic activities, especially ours that is a monoproduct economy that depends so much on the oil revenue. The good news is that the price of oil is um, looking up a bit better than what the budget for the year proposed, and, um, and that's in its own. But uh, considering what's happening globally uh, and the global economy and what OPEC is proposing, maybe looking towards uh, cuts in production, you know, what you can gain from pricing, you might lose in volume. So um, you can see that uh, the entire economic outlook is uh, 
still not very, very stable, and uh, most of our applications are being met or not met at all, being met with some level of difficulty. And we are, you can see that a lot of uh, effort is being made uh, to borrow to support uh, the, the budget and support the economic activity in the country. But uh, in all, uh, with the advent of uh, the COVID uh, vaccine that is coming, and generally believing that in days ahead there will be better economic activity because uh, once people, the fear of uh, COVID transmission is reduced, then there will be movement across borders mm -hmm. and uh, these are things that can easily uh, enhance uh, economic activity and uh, let, let me stay with you on the COVID issue. What is the uh, reception like in your constituency and have you been able to galvanize activities towards especially uh, people getting vaccinated? Um, naturally in our place uh, with respect to uh, medical um, attention and uh, vaccine generally we don't we're not averse to it. No, definitely you know we are nomadic we move around a lot so and people, for people to move around, they need to meet a lot of conditions, whether in business or education or for anything at all. Once you are engaged in moving up and down, people will naturally want to have their vaccines before they move. And uh, I believe uh, the chief executive of the state and others have, uh, have taken theirs already before now. And uh, I think uh, the response in a number of people are taking theirs. Well, let's go back to you know your own uh, efforts so far as a political leader, as a representative of your people in getting society back on an even key. What are the initiatives? and how has it been able to percolate to the people? Come again? The, the initiatives, uh, from your own perspective, from your own efforts, you know, uh, in trying to get society back on an even keel, okay. especially your constituents. My constituents, oh, thank you very much. Um, a lot of effort is being made uh, to simulate uh, the economic activity back by putting the right infrastructure. Um, we're putting up uh, with what is happening already, engaging people, trying to educate them, ensuring that people adhere to the COVID protocols, also trying to re-educate people on, bit, on new ways of uh, doing things. Because you agree with me that the post-COVID economy entails that a lot of things have to be done the other way. Things are changing. A lot of, a lot of things are more going to be done without direct contact. People are engaging, uh, involving the meetings through Zoom. Uh, people are getting education through Zoom or through wireless communication or through media. And a lot of things are being done. That there is improvement. Even when you listen to uh, the annex chairman, He's trying to make sure that uh, conservation has to go on through uh, online methods. A big part of it. A big part of it, so that uh, to direct people, so you can reduce crowding. So the, the entire processes of uh, activity is being changed presently, so that uh, we can uh, catch up with uh, the new normal, which is a uh, post-COVID economy or post-COVID era. So everybody is involved, all hands are on deck. Government is uh, putting up regulations, and uh, people are also uh, encouraged to adhere to them so that people cannot uh, easily get crowded or people find themselves in a place where measures are not taken to uh, obey the protocols. So, but uh, everybody's involved. It's not when just I, like security or anything. It's all everybody's business. Yeah, when I hear of Newey, Newey South or North, you know, what, what, we come, what comes readily to mind is automobile. Sure. The automobile industry and, of course, perhaps the spin-offs from there. Yeah. In terms of, you know, youth engagement in the spin-offs, are yeah. you seeing some encouraging movement from the youth, especially now that, uh, you know, government opportunities in terms of jobs are not uh, uh, so readily available? Uh, considering what is uh, about to uh, happen in the next few years, uh, especially the Af involvement of uh, Nigeria in uh, African Continental Trade Agreement, um, Africa is going to suffer a lot. So we are trying to put up structures that will uh, enhance uh, manufacturing, local manufacturing, so that uh, we can be turned into a dumping ground for other people who are producers. So, but uh, the right infrastructures are being pushed for. Already there are existing skills. If you come to Newe, there's an existing cluster that is known for manufacturing, uh, industrial, commercial people. So, and uh, a lot of things are happening there. You can see we already have an existing manufacturing plant and a lot of other component manufacturers. Um, Innocent motor companies there, then you have a union automobile, uh, you know, auto, uh, which does uh, batteries, and a whole lot of other components, by EB2 Group and uh, Chickasin Group, and a whole lot of them. You have many companies uh, that are still surviving because uh, naturally the way the industrial growth came was very organic. 
people from trading got involved with their technical partners and started manufacturing and uh, somehow we established a, 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 a cluster that is self-sustained unlike most uh, industrial clusters in Nigeria that over time died. New have shown strong resilience and uh, what is left now is for government to make sure that uh, they provide the needed support by way of the right infrastructure, the right regulatory framework, like the quality control, so that we can meet with the international standards. So when we're looking at it, uh, we are, because that strong cluster have a lot of multiply effect in our global economy, uh, you know. So, and uh, when you say that, for a vehicle, you have over 2,500 to 3,500 companies, and you have a good number of uh, company manufacturers concentrating in one place, optimizing the scale of uh, um, shared services so that they, are, they can drive down the cost of production. So you can use that advantage to bring in original equipment manufacturers to come in and set up their manufacturing plants along with their partners in that cluster. So that, that way, even uh, other assembly plants can come in and manufacturers can come in because already innocent is there and a uh, host of other companies are coming around. And of course, yeah. uh, you know, a gamut of uh, spin-offs. Spin uh, uh, we'll come back for the home run, but let's take a few more political stories. The Forum of All Buhari Support Groups uh, is lending its support to the response and efforts of the federal government in finding solutions to the security challenges in the country. Ever noted with concern that government effort to resolve these challenges were being tweaked in collaboration with some of external forces who do not wish the country and its people well. Members condemned the resurgence of ethnic warlords from certain parts of the country that have been agitating for the breakup of Nigeria. And we call the federal government to be firm in dealing with individuals or groups involved in such dangerous agitation. The forum expressed its confidence in the ability of the federal government <coughs> under the able leadership of His Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, to effectively deal with the challenges of our nation if given the necessary cooperation by the people. Now, former Speaker House of Representatives Demiji Bankoli, who recently defected to the All Progressives Congress, APC, has dotted the I's and crossed the T's during the APC membership registration and revalidation exercise at Waten Iporo Shudeke in Abeokuta South local government area of Ogun State. To come home, to do the needful, to be identified with us at home, it shows he's a great Democrat. And just across the border, uh, Mohamed Bazoum has taken the oath of office as the president of Niger Republic. The swearing-in ceremony was held at the Mahatma Gandhi Conference Center in Niame. It comes despite a failed coup earlier this week. Position of power since independence from France in 1960. Outgoing President Mohamedou Isofo, who stepped down after two five-year terms, handed power over to Mohamed Bazoum. Bazoum, the 61-year-old former interior minister, had been the right-hand man of Isofo. The country's constitutional court validated the runoff election results in February and declared Mohamed Bazoum winner over rival Mohamed Usman. Usman is still contesting the results and on 22nd March, he called on the opposition not to sit in the National Assembly and also called on the army to disregard orders from what he called an illegal and illegitimate authority. Mohammed Usman, a former president, has refused to concede and instead taking his case to the courts, sparking mass protests by his supporters. It remains to be seen if his call or his rejection of the election results has any impact on the attempted coup. The coup attempt failed on Tuesday night after a military unit tried to seize the presidential palace. The assailants from a nearby air base were reported to have fled after the presidential guard met their attack with heavy shelling and gunfire. Government spokesman Abdurrahman Zakaria said several people had been arrested while others were still being sought, but that the situation was under control. Justin Bemuni, NTA News.
Thank you, Justin. Now, uh, we still have Honorable uh, Chris Azubogo of uh, Newe, North Newe South and Ekusigo, Federal Constituency of Anambra State. I hope I got that correct. Um, you called Mr. Project. <laughs> um, in a few short, uh, you know, lines, tell us exactly what is happening at the moment and what, uh, reps, um, you know, constitu your constituents uh, can look forward to as uh, uh, the year continues to go. Oh, uh, the year continues. Uh, we're looking at uh, on the completion of uh, ongoing projects. I uh, just um, as uh, we're concluding the capital budget for 2020. A lot of uh, projects that are ongoing in our constituencies are there. Some are being concluded, uh, but uh, all, all in all, we believe that uh, service delivery, project delivery are ongoing to our constituents, and uh, I'm sure that uh, they are happy with what we are doing. What are the key areas of focus? Uh, we're focusing on um, road infrastructure, health infrastructure, or health programs, uh, educational programs, and general training of men, uh, women and youths uh, for empowerment. And generally, it's uh, things we do where people acquire skills and uh, you support them to start off uh, businesses they do. So working with the uh, youth groups to do what we can to support them to grow. Anambra has a date with destiny this uh, uh, year, and of course uh, we understand that momentum is already being gathered. But what would be your word uh, to indigents of your state as uh, you know processes begin to gather momentum, especially against the backdrop of some of the worries expressed by the INEC chairman uh, earlier in the program? Uh, the good thing is that uh, elections in Anambra State has never been very violent. It's been very peaceful and relatively uh, processes are being adhered to. And there's always a brotherly thing. We don't normally experience the violence, but uh, uh, and I believe that uh, what we're experiencing here is uh, generally security in the country, not because of the election. I do understand. And uh, if, if for any reason we start fearing that some things like that will happen in the course of time, we'll be able to call uh, in the, the, law author uh, the authorities uh, because uh, nobody will accept a place where people are going to be intimidated or people are going to be malign or meant to stay, be in a form of fear before they can uh, make their choices. So naturally, it's not in our culture. And I believe that uh, for whatever reason that this has happened in this, will, uh, the leaders of the leaders in the state, both political, traditional, and religious leaders, will come together because security is everybody's business. So we can have proper engagement, especially the youth groups, so that we can easily be assertive, be also proactive, and also engage in proper intelligence gathering and so that uh, some of these things can easily be nipped at the board. Uh, we know that uh, you definitely have uh, some miscreants in the society, but they are no more in number, so that uh, the right thinking people will always sit up to make sure that the atmosphere for peaceful processes are being observed. So we believe only all. We want to make progress, and uh, you can only have progress where there, there's peace and the atmosphere of uh, Tranquility. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've, for the past half an hour, we've had uh, Honorable Chris uh, Azubogu of uh, Newe North, Newe South, and Ekusigo Federal Constituency here with us. And especially day like this, uh, we want to thank you for being a part of it. Uh, that has been Political Update on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, where we give you the very best, the very best the news, reviews, previews, and interviews. My name is Fisai Ogunfui, thanking you for staying tuned. All the best. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye now.